there, my name is Jasna Francoeur. I'm a professor here at the DigiPen Institute of Technology. I'm also the BFA program director uh, for the Redmond campus. We also have other campuses in Singapore and Spain, which uh, I was a part of helping to stand up. Uh, and of course, the whole notion of DigiPen is that we are a global uh, institution and we're a very diverse school with a variety of disciplines that we teach. My specific discipline is traditional visual effects animation. Prior to coming to DigiPen, I was with Disney, feature animation in Florida, uh, also trained in California, working on such films as Lion King, Tarzan, Mulan, Lilo and Stitch, and many others, including short films like Roger Rabbit, and then also working on park projects and occasionally even things like uh, 2D video games. So today, uh, we're going to do a very quick talk about uh, one small aspect of uh, visual effects animation. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to animate an avalanche. So let's get started. So traditional visual effects animation always starts with a gesture, and this is very important. It's no different than figure drawing. And gesture is the heart of it all. Someone asked me one time, how does one become a very good animator uh, of uh, visual effects? And I said, actually, just learning how to draw the human figure and learning how to draw it rapidly. Uh, meaning that we're really looking at the path and the line of action. So everything that we do in visual effects is informed by force. So if I'm thinking about an avalanche coming down, I'm going to think about that path of action or that gesture first. And that will kind of inform everything that I do. And it looks like I might just be scribbling here. But the fact is, this is the most important part of any drawing. As I said, it's the gesture. Because it's in the gesture that is the heart of the animation. And of course, notice that my range of motion on the whiteboard is with my shoulder. This range of motion, which most of us tend to do when we really want to get precious with drawing, is where we might do a cleanup line. But I'm not to that point. Right now, I'm drawing with my full arm. And of course, I'm, I'm thinking about things like line hierarchy, but also specifically, I'm thinking about shapes in front of shapes in front of shapes. And I'm thinking about um, perspective. But more than anything else, unlike character animation, I can't necessarily look in the mirror and pretend to be an avalanche. I know that sounds crazy, but I can feel what it's like to be an avalanche. An avalanche has force. It has tremendous amount of thrust. And interestingly, I would say that avalanches are very similar to waterfalls up until they collide at the bottom. And right now we're not looking at the collision. This would just be the force of the snow as it comes down. The two things that we're developing are the silhouette, and that would be the whole shape of this, kind of like, almost imagine like the cookie cutter shape of this. If we were to darken, what is the actual silhouette of this shape? But in visual effects, we also have an internal silhouette. And that means that we are now also thinking about how does the light affect it. And in many ways, when we're animating, any kind of effect, we're equally animating the internal silhouette. It becomes very, very critical. And this may sound strange as well, but if I was doing a rough animation for a scene, it would not be any more complicated than that. This is all that a director would need to see in order to understand um, the timing. Obviously, design all those things could be finessed later. So in the demo that you will see today, you will see the snow coming down, so you'll see the full force of it. But then you'll also see, very importantly, you'll see it hitting kind of a slope, kind of a perspective. So one part of the animation, of course, is the animation as it comes down. The other part, of course, is going to be what happens when that hits a surface. And in this case, there's also going to be a lot of force as well. So we can think about these lines. I'm going to make this a different color just for ease. And again, the idea is shape in front of shape. But notice, even though this is snow, 
This feels very much like smoke. And this feels very much like a waterfall. So we can imagine maybe that's falling behind now. I think people can get very lost too because with visual effects animation, there are a lot of abstract shapes that we have to track. Feel free to work along with me at home. I've often been compared to Bob Ross, but I just don't have his hair. And then same thing, internal shapes. We're just thinking about not just the outer silhouette, but we're thinking about the inner silhouette. And of course, the point is not to make a precious drawing. The point is to make a drawing that has flow, that has some type of consistent visual physics. Also line hierarchy. As things come closer to camera, I'm going to start making that line a bit more intense. And then, of course, there'll be little particles, too. The thing about visual effects is we always have to think about big, medium, and small shapes. So the purpose of a course like this one uh, is foundational, and it's also theoretical, and it becomes the underpinning for understanding timing, um, having a certain kind of visual literacy for how shapes behave and how they evolve. Uh, and of course, uh, like any foundational class, this could be extrapolated and used uh, for those who want to pursue uh, visual effects in Houdini or want to pursue visual effects uh, in a game engine. So this type of class is often offered uh, second semester, sophomore year, uh, and then of course for all upperclassmen, but it would specifically be for those uh, individuals who are interested in pursuing visual effects as a career. Thank you very much.